Research can be done in lots of different ways, especially in the age of information. Things like YouTube, podcasts, blogs are all different ways of getting information, but academic articles are still the gold standard. Now, there are loads of different places you can search for different academic research. Some search engines are more specific about articles, more specific about the research that they show, and then other places like Google Scholar, which are just global search engines for any article you can find. I'm going to use Google Scholar as an example, and I'm going to use coaching effectiveness as my search term. Now, when I search for coaching effectiveness, I'm using this because this is what my undergraduate degree was in. You can see I get all the results. Those familiar with Google Scholar, you could probably skip this bit for a second. But for those unfamiliar, very quickly, you have the starred section. So you can bookmark any article and save it to your library. There is the access to my library. You can then cite the article. So here are all the citations for when you're referencing it in the work or the academic piece you're writing. Then you have the cited by. So this is giving you a list of all other articles that cite this specific article, related articles, and then all versions of this article. And you can see at the side, we have where the PDF can be found. This is on ResearchGate, another great place to find research articles. And then when we click onto the article, you actually go to wherever the article is stored. In this case, Sage Journals. Now, once you've found an article you want to read, obviously you go and read it as long as you have access to it. If you don't have access to it because it's behind a paywall, there are a couple of little workarounds that I will go through later in this video. But once you have found the article and you've read the article, a lot of the time you want to have a look at citations. So what other things have referenced this article, the references to that article and anything else related to sometimes the publisher or the topic or keywords. Now, when you go into journals, sometimes journals have keywords that you can go and search for. So if I open this up, you can see here are some other articles that are similar. Or if I go back to the Google Scholar search, you can see I can go into cited by and have a look at some of the other cited articles. Now you can see clicking on all of that, you end up jumping around a lot all over the place. So Research Rabbit is a tool that I've recently come across and started using that actually solves a lot of those issues. So let's have a look. So you can see I have a collection. It's completely empty. There are zero papers. I'm going to go into sports coaching because that's what I've called it. I'm going to add by search and I'm going to add in the name of the article I'm looking for. So it's easier for me to select uh, and I'm going to click it. And now I can add this to collection. So if I click add to collection, you can see here it is. Now I've actually read this already because it's an article I'm very familiar with. So I've just added it back to my collection, which is why that red is there. But for those new articles, that, that won't be there. But you can see we have this progressive workflow going through. Now, when I'm on this article here, now I can look at similar work. Now, this is going to generate similar work to just this one article. You can see we've got 300 different papers. Here is the network view. So I can have a look at any of these papers. That's 2012 paper. I can click there and it brings it up here. If I'm back in here, however, I can then change the timeline view. And now I can see what they are. So the most recent articles relating to effective coaching is this one and this one. Another way of exploring this specific paper is by looking at all references. So instead of having to go in and manually going through all the references, you can see we get that same network or timeline view for all of the references. So there's 81 references for this paper. And these are the articles that this paper has referenced. Again, you can see all of these different papers. You can click and go through. Now, all of these options have come up again. So I can have a look at the references for this paper. Uh, again, I can come in through and then let's instead of having a look at the references have a look at citations So I'm now looking at the citations of this paper and again, we've got this view We've got a timeline view in here We can have a look at the last author or the first author as labels now personally I don't really change these that much So I'm gonna click on this article and whenever we find an article and decide you know what this is actually a good article And I want to have a look at that I can add this to collection So if I click that button, it's going to add it to the collection I'm in so if I go all the way back to where I was you can see there it is. I've now added it to the sports coaching collection. Now this is actually going to change the similar work suggestions. So if I click similar work, it's actually going to come up with a different 300 papers. Now I click here, I'm going to add this to collection. And again, see, we've got different similar work suggestions. Now later work and earlier work have also become options. And these are specific to just these three articles. So if I go later work, this is later work. So work closer to now. So 2021 is obviously this year. For those of you watching in the future, it's currently 2021. So these are the articles that are most recent related to these three articles that we have in this collection. And earlier work allows you to go back in time so you can actually see where these articles have actually come from.
when looking in this window, you can see we've obviously got this number up here and this number is the citation. So if I click 500, it's automatically going to take me to the citations of this paper. So there's 300 and I can scroll down and see all 500. Obviously, I'm not really going to look for them all, but I could filter to check to see if there's an article that I have in mind. Okay, did was this was this cited? Did this cite that? Uh, something else you can do when you're having a look around is actually have a look at these authors and suggested authors. So the authors of this article is Gene Coat and Wade Gilbert. Now, this is where I find this very, very useful when I'm having a look at a specific topic and I find a research team or a researcher in specific that has done loads and loads of work on the area I'm looking for. So I can go into this person, very similar to Google Scholar, but I can then go publish work and I can see the path that I've gone down. That is the difference here. I can see the path where I'm going through, where I'm going down and when I carry on I can then go oh, okay let's add this to collection I can click here let's add this to collection as well add this one to collection I'm not actually reading these I'm just adding them to collection because uh, for an example now when I come all the way back to here I can come back to similar work and this again is going to bias us slightly different so look at that coach education and continuing professional development that wasn't brought up as a suggestion previously but now it's right at the top because of the other articles we put in there and this brings up suggestions that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of something else to note when you're looking at suggested authors is all the other authors potentially in the team or in other research teams and this is good for finding other research teams that do the similar work that you may not have found otherwise. And what I actually found in my sleep research, which you can see I've done some sleep research, which was in the video prior, is there was a research team that I kept I kept coming across over and over and over again. And I wanted to have a look and see if there were any other research teams, and there were, and I actually found them through this. So I went through the name, so Gene Coat, and it came up with all different researchers, and I found this cluster very similar to this. So this is sort of one group of researchers, uh, and this was another group of researchers, similar viewing in, in the sleep. So this is how I found different research groups, and obviously when I click into this person, I can then see published work. Now when I go into published work, you can see, ooh, here's some more research that isn't necessarily related, but here's a cluster. And here's some other orphan research that doesn't have any relation yet, but I'm sure is applicable. And this is where I can start adding things to that research dive, to that rabbit hole that I'm going down when I'm looking at different papers to research. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can see I've got the red sort of tag on there. It's not a tag, it's actually another collection. So you can see red, it is in here as well. So they are two different collections. And you can have the same article in multiple collections. So you can see all of the articles in this red collection is actually in a, another collection. Now I'm using red as a status for me because there isn't currently a status option in Research Rabbit, but I can see red. So I know if there's a red attachment in to, to any of these articles, I know I've read it. Or I can see, oh, okay, this is in Sports Coaching, this is in Sleep Processes. Now it's in Sleep Process, but I could add it to another collection, which is what this button is. In addition to that, you've probably seen note popping up, and this is just a very simple uh, text editor where you can just add something in, and there it is. It's just a very quick note, maybe a, a reference why you grabbed it, or a thought, or anything that you want to add specifically to this note. I'm actually going to delete it because I don't need that something note on there, but you can add that to any of the papers in here. Now, for those of you that have been looking over here, you can actually see you can share your collections. And this is where I think a lot of the power of Research Rabbit comes in. Not because it's not useful in other aspects, obviously I've gone through loads of different ways that it's useful, but all the other search engines allow you to grab these articles, which is great, you can search just like Research Rabbit, but you can't collect things and then share that one collection. You'd then have to either copy the references into text and send them off, or you'd have to find a way to get people to have the same collection. Now, in Research Rabbit, you can actually share a collection. So this is with my sister, I've shared this with my sister and she can see this article. Now I can add a paper, she can add a paper. She could add similar works, go through and research anything here. So if you're in a research group at university, for example, four of you are working on a project, you could have a collection of papers that you're finding. Someone's looking at some one area, someone's looking at another area, and you can see what other papers other people are finding because maybe they found a paper that you've also found. So instead of both of you reading the same paper and getting references from the same paper one person could read it and go through it or maybe both of you have found the paper so it's a really good paper or it covers different areas uh, something else that i thought about when looking at sharing collections is lectures 
when you're in a lecture and you have those references at the end of the lecture or before a lecture you need to read these or these are really good articles for this you can just share the collection and they can explore it in their own time on their own computers and with the shared collections you can actually change who has access to them so if I come into here you can see uh, I have my sister's email which I will probably blur out and I can change that they can only read it or that they can add papers. So you could have multiple people in here. Maybe you could have the two lecturers that are in charge of the lecture adding papers in as they go. And then you can have the students that are just reading it. And you can have small collections. And this is where Research Rabbit is actually looking to go forwards. They are looking to have tiered or hierarchy collections, which will allow you to have one collection, maybe a lecture, and then different topics inside that lecture. And because articles can be in multiple collections, you could have a paper in five different collections relating to different articles. Again, being shared with lots of different people maybe students that they can just see this is an example of a collection that my sister has shared with me so it's actually her collection and she shared it with me and i've added one of these papers so she added this paper about monkeys she likes zoology i added this paper about i don't even know what that is competition and cooperation there you go no idea what it's about either uh, but i added that paper so she's given me access this was this was my collection that i shared with her and this was her collection she shared with me so that's how it's viewed on this side if you have any questions about research rabbit i definitely reach out to them and try and access this because I have found this very useful and I'm sure I will include this in future videos and how I use this specifically in research but I wanted to do a video covering research rabbit because it's becoming a big part of how I research tools now I did mention at the beginning of the video that sometimes you can't have access to certain articles so let's have a look at this one as an example this one has a PDF let's find another article so here is an article that doesn't have a PDF so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through to where it is it's in PubMed now PubMed I'm assuming is going to have have a paywall behind it let's have a look yes there is a paywall now there are a couple of solutions one you could go to ResearchGate reach out to some of these authors and see if they can send over some sort of manuscript and the other one is actually illegal I'm going to say that now it is an illegal site full stop don't use it if you don't want to go beyond the bounds of uh, legalities but lots of people do use it so I'm going to share it anyway and it's called SciHub and what you can do with SciHub is if you scroll down and actually grab the DOI of the article, I'm going to copy that, go to the SciHub, I'm going to enter it in here, go paste, enter. It's then going to show you the entire manuscript. Now this again is not legal, I'm going to say that again, it's not legal, it is illegal, but I now have a PDF copy of this article. So if you do really, really need it, uh, you can use SciHub to access some of the articles just for those that want to learn without having to pay for it. I'm not being paid by Research Rabbit to say any of this. I just think it's a really cool tool. So expect to see more research articles referencing uh, some of the things that I find in future videos. But until then, get off YouTube and do something productive with your time instead.